Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and with the summer months coming up on us, I'm going to show you exactly how to top off your refrigerant using the little cans you get from the auto parts store. So I go over how the AC system more or less works with the AC pressure switch and how that's defeated and everything. If you want to just skip that and go right to adding the refrigerant because you understand how it works, then go to this timestamp here and you can just skip to what you came to the video for. So you might not have access to a regular keg of R134A refrigerant, but what you probably have access to is one of these. These are available at every single auto parts store. They're even available at Walmart or on Amazon, and I will do my best to leave a link down below in the description to one of this product, which is just a very small can of R134A and a nozzle and a fitting that goes on the low side. That's all this is. So there's two scenarios when it comes to watching this video that are applicable to using the little bit of R134A to kind of top the system off. The first one is the charge is just a little bit low. The car's a little bit older. It's a sealed system, but it kind of leaks out a little teeny tiny bit over decades, and you just have a little bit more to add, and it's not a big deal. The second scenario is if you have already vacuumed down your system and it's holding vacuum and everything's good you can go ahead and hook the little can up and fill it all the way up bring it up to a base charge and then begin our process here and that would also apply to you because uh, again not everyone has access to a keg of r134a if you have not vacuumed down your system yet go ahead and watch the video up here in the card that will show you exactly how to do that and uh, there's also a link down below in the description for you do not proceed further in this video if the other two situations are applicable to you the first one is if you have zero charge if there's just atmospheric air inside of your system do not just put refrigerant in it thinking it's going to make it work it isn't you're just wasting refrigerant and chances are you have a massive leak somewhere if you just hook the gauge up and it just says zero and you weren't aware of that you probably have a leak somewhere you have to fix first. The other scenario is just a plain leak. You know it has a leak in it. Don't put refrigerant in it. It's not going to work. So don't go any further if those two apply to you. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in and get our AC nice and cold. So before we get started with the little can, I want to show what is going on. And I think it's really important to understand how the system works before we add refrigerant to it. So what I've done is hooked my gauges up to the high and the low side. You do not need these gauges. This is just for instructional purposes so you understand how the system functions. We can see the low side is at about 60 PSI, is what that says? Yeah, 60 PSI, and the high side agrees, which is good because the truck's off. So the AC is not compressing anything. Nothing is happening. But watch when I turn the truck on. So look what happens. The low side drops, the high side comes up, but watch, as the low side drops, the pressure switch is no longer satisfied with the amount of pressure on the low side. So the compressor will turn off, turned itself off to protect itself. So that way the compressor isn't ruined by a lack of refrigerant. Now this compressor comes back on because you know, it's above 30 PSI. It thinks it has the kind of pressure to make the high side happy, make the whole AC work. But then it compresses down the high side tries to come up. It's not quite getting there. It's not very cold. And then the compressor will turn itself back off to protect itself once again. See? And you can hear it happen. You can hear the compressor clutch engage and disengage, but it's really important to understand that this is what is happening. So if you hear your compressor turning on and off, that's because your charge is low. And that's what that situation will look like on the technical side. But again, you don't need these gauges, but now you understand basically what's going on. The pressure switch is defeated, it turns the thing on, and then the, and then the pressure drops on the low side. It's not happy with that, so it turns the compressor off. The low side comes back up, and then the switch says, oh, hey, wait a second, there's refrigerant in here. So then it turns the compressor on. So it's kind of like a self-defeating prophecy. So what we need to do is we need to put more in the low side so that way when the compressor turns on, the low side doesn't go quite as low. And what that will do is sustain the compressor and the compressor can keep compressing and making the AC cold. So that's what it looks like when your clutch is engaged on your AC compressor. You can see it spinning and whirring around. And that's what it looks like when it stops. So now the pressure switch has stepped in to save the compressor and save the whole system by turning the compressor off. That's what it looks like from the front. You can see it turning on and off, cycling on and off. And I thought it was important that you knew what that looked like. 
So here is my low side pressure port on this truck. If you need help finding yours, cause they're in different locations on different makes and models, I have a whole video for that and the link is down below in the description and up in the card for your convenience. So we just need to take the cover off just like that and then go get our can of refrigerant. So what I have here is just a very conventional can of R134A, which is typically the refrigerant uh, older cars use. And by older, I mean older than 21 or 22, something like that. The standard changed right around then to 1234YF. But if you're watching this video, typically 134A is the refrigerant you are going to use. And you can buy this literally at any auto parts store. All of them have them. I've seen them literally everywhere and I've left link down below in the description to this. Sometimes they sell them without the handy nozzle sprayer and you have to buy that separately or something like that. So what I like to do on cans like this is you don't know if there's refrigerant or not in this line. And if there's atmospheric air because this has been sitting on a shelf and this hasn't really sealed on that great, you're gonna put atmospheric air in your system, which is a problem. It's not gonna work if you do that. So I like to just purge this. Just like that, doesn't need to be much. Now I know there's just refrigerant in this line. So we can get our fitting ready and just put it on the low side fitting, pull it back, push it on. Sometimes you have to brace the line. There we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of pressure to get it on there. And once it's on there, we can start the truck. Before we get started on anything, when we are filling the AC or doing anything with AC, make sure that you're on maximum cold. The AC compressor is selected to be on, so the AC is going to turn on, and the circulation's on, and the fan speed is at its maximum setting. So just go ahead and make sure that those settings are all set before we start adding refrigerant. We know the compressor is on because we can see that our gauge is going down. Sometimes this is an analog gauge, mine just happens to be digital. And we should bring that up just a little bit so we can pull the trigger and bring that up. And it is entirely possible to overfill this. And if you overfill it, well, a lot of that refrigerant has to come out. And the way we can just kind of feel this out is just go over to your vents and feel if they're cold. If they're cold, stop adding refrigerant. Add some more. And you only add in maybe five to 10 second increments. You don't just keep on the throttle you know, forever and ever. I'm just gonna keep adding until my compressor no longer cycles on and off. Well, right here, it's about 65 degrees outside and our pressure should be 25 to 35 while the compressor is on. So it's still a little bit on the low side. Looks like I'm gonna need another one of these. So yeah, even with the truck running, you can just pull this off and you're good to go. And then I'm gonna go get another can of this stuff and put it on my nozzle with my new can attached to my nozzle. Go ahead and hook it back up. Yeah, you can do it while the truck's running. Just support the low side. Like this. And then really press it down. You wanna make sure that's nice and secure. It's not anything's gonna leak out. I'll add some more until you can see on our gauge here, it says 25.7. I know it's a little bit on the low side, but here's the deal. It says right there on our chart that if it's 65 degrees, you want it at 25 PSI on the low side because as temperature climbs, the PSI inside the system is gonna climb and you really don't want it to be higher than maybe 55, as it says right there, 60, something like that. So we can see that our low side's at 25 PSI and the AC compressor is not cycling on and off. You don't hear it clicking on and off. So clearly there's enough refrigerant. There's two, and there's two other ways you can tell that. So let's check those out. So what we can do, is now that I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with how much refrigerant's in there. If you think it needs a little more than I add it, but putting more refrigerant in it won't give you any more cold. Once it's hit cold, that's it, you're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. Yes, you can do it when the truck's on, it's totally fine. And I can even see a bit of frost building up on the low side pipe. I know you can't really feel that, but look. So this is saying 40 degrees Fahrenheit and you can just grab this with your hand and I can feel that it's very cold. There's even some frost beginning to develop on there. So that's one So that's one way that I know the AC system's cold. Stop adding refrigerant. You can add too much, like I said earlier, 
and then you're really in a pickle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the low side on, and there's one other way you can just test if the AC's cold. And that's just come to your vent with your hand and see if it feels cold. And I can tell you that this is really nice and icy, even though it's a cooler day. It's about, it's about 60 degrees or so outside, but I can tell you the AC is definitely working and it's working amazingly. And of course you can tell that the AC compressor isn't just cycling on and off endlessly. You'd hear it click on and click off, which this isn't doing anymore. So this is perfect. So that is how to use a little bit of R134A to top off your AC system. This is very, very easy. You could very much do this in a parking lot. The only thing I wanna say is don't put too much in. I see this all the time on our site, twocarpros.com, where you can ask a question for absolutely free and people put in too much refrigerant. You know, their low side on a cool day will be at 60 PSI and that's way too much. So what happens is the pressures are too great and the AC system can't work efficiently or even at all and the AC will actually get warmer instead of colder. So, so once the AC has gotten cold, just stop. Putting more refrigerant in it isn't really gonna make it more cold once it's hit cold. And you can tell that just by grabbing the low side and feeling that it's cold with your hand or put, placing your face in front of the vent and noticing that it is much cooler just stop adding because if you put too much in it's gonna have to come out and that has to be and that has to be evacuated by a refrigerant professional but you can totally add a little bit of refrigerant on your own if you think it's just a little bit low even in my situation we only went from 19 psi to 25 psi on the low side it might not seem like a lot but it, it needed more volume of refrigerant in order to get that low side number a little bit higher so we can have the high side a lot higher so we can have nice cool refrigerated air inside of the truck. Usually in this scenario, you don't need a ton more. So it's not too surprising that we only needed a little bit more out of the second can, not very much at all. Also, you're not gonna get every single drop out of this thing. Let's say the low side's at 25 PSI. Well, if the can's at 25 PSI, it's basically empty. Despite the fact I can hear refrigerant in here. I'm not gonna squeeze the trigger, but just trust me, there's refrigerant in here. You're not gonna get every last drop out. And what does that mean? It means this needs to be recycled officially. You actually have a little bit of, uh, in this state, you have a, a core charge you can take it back and get, I think you get $10 back for the can. They don't really want these in landfills, which is understandable. So sometimes you'll do the math and be like, oh, well, this is 18 ounces and my refrigerant system takes X amount of ounces. Well, not really, you, you'd have to weigh the can. So just kind of keep that in mind that you're not gonna get every drop out. It's not like a water bottle where you can just pour every single drop out. It's not like that. If there's 25 PSI, this is trying to feed and this is at 25 PSI, nothing's going to happen. So that's just kind of something to keep in mind while you're doing this job. So that is how to put a little bit of refrigerant in your system using the little cans. This is something anybody could do on a road trip, in a parking lot, literally anywhere, as long as your low side is easy to get to. If you found this video helpful or interesting at all, please consider giving a like or even subscribing. It really helps my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.